my name is Pierre Alma, and this is uh, the fourth time that IPAG arranges this kind of knowledge cafe webinar. Welcome, Joe. Welcome, everyone. This morning, I was hoping to spend some time with you talking first about trends in agility. Scrum continues to be the leading agile framework uh, that is in use today. Scrum Bond growing a little bit of popularity. A lot more folks talk about Scrum Bond, Kanban, culture conflict, pressure to use waterfall. Waterfall is an inappropriate way to develop a product. I won't even say software, I'll say product. It is appropriate. If you know all the requirements up front and they are truly frozen and you truly have a committed user community and you have hopefully a single release date that would uh, be appropriate for your work, as in don't change, because all that change in waterfall stirs up a lot of trouble, stirs up by change requests and change request systems that are onerous, burdensome, a lot of overhead to uh, getting work done. They get in the way of doing work. Agile, of course, accommodates all that. So, and this pressure to use waterfall is killing us in another way. The team's capable and certified, but also work with leadership so that they understand what a agile mindset mindset is about. You can't build anything with Scrum. You can't build anything with Scrum. Uh, business, IT, staying aligned has been an issue over the years. If you look at CIO magazine surveys, etc. So completely agree with that. I like to say, follow the money. Well, it's the money I'll tell you the truth. If we change the funding mechanism and the budgeting and planning in that respect, uh, IT's more likely to have a goal that's consistent with the business because IT is only there to serve the business, the business of the company and make it successful. We don't need IT if we don't have a business. A uh, business value, that's different than cost. I want to make that very clear, value delivery. Instead of schedule, I care about releases and I don't care about scope. I care about priorities. Look, that's measuring success of agile initiatives. This is agile projects. By the way, this is a micro scheduling tool and I prefer it. A culture and the ability to deliver business value. Which agile are they actually using? Uh, how mature are they with agility? Are they just getting started? Or are they well along their way? Are they using DevOps? to automate and drive quick production releases. Are they using product teams or project teams? Release defects is a strong reflection on the quality of our engineering process. If we're building software or our process, if we're building a marketing campaign or our process, if we're building something in our sales environment. So uh, once we get that out, are we, we can actually align story points with function points. Now, but how small a story should be, uh, folks don't really have a good way to stop decomposing epics down into stories and, you know, how small can a story be? Not too big, not too small, just right. Not everybody can afford to hire Goldilocks to work on their projects to make that determination for them. By the way, I actually work with clients and encourage them to do that because they don't know where to stop decomposing posing stories and they also often have stories that are very large and have multiple functions in them which should be done separately anyhow so decompose those stories into or to an elementary process and i would say and i do say during certification workshops to my developers and scrum masters product owners back in 2013 where we looked at function points use case points and story points from a case study that I've done with uh, some of my colleagues after leaving Sandia. I uh, don't know what you're doing with stories and you'd like to align them with function points, decompose them to a uh, elementary process level and the transition is much smoother there. Treat non-functional requirements as acceptance criteria. Lots of folks like to put them into their, their product backlog, which is I've never seen a non-functional requirement, and I'm talking to an audience here that knows about non-functional measurement 
I've never seen one that was not an acceptance criteria associated with another story. If you come across some or think you know some, you can email me. They don't have to be the subject of our time together today. To expect it value, whether using cost per function point or value per function point, there's another nice way to make a transition there. Secondly, we can compare functional size to releases on our roadmap, delivering delivery time per function point as an example. Then we track them and then we, what? Put in change requests, update our requirements. <clears throat> in the agile space, we want enough understanding to get started, not so much as to think we have the entire scope of the problem understood. We need to have enough of the problem understood, not the entire darn thing. So. This whole notion of getting all your require requirements signed off up front and traditional organization practices, we have a model for estimating uh, function in the IFPUG space. We have a number of models and different models for doing predictions and estimations, right? Sometimes a tour committee does that on our behalf. In Agile, as in traditional development, the persons performing the work should be doing the estimates, not not somebody outside that space that doesn't really understand the problem space. Project planning. Well, here we detail the work of the project before it gets started and we get started and we update it as needed. Uh, I prefer the agile approach, which is intentionally absent of a project plan, but we do frequent sprint and release planning. We don't have a big plan that shoots out for two years, identifies every person, the hours they'll be spending on what task when we are that uncertain about our outcomes. In the area of schedule, schedule becomes a contract in our traditional world, but uh, in the agile space, substitute release frequency for a, for a schedule. Oh, please let us change, you know, give us more time, give us more money. We screwed up, we got the estimate wrong, the scope was wrong, the things have changed. No. We, why? Why do we do this to ourselves, right? Change control is a part of grooming in the agile space. We should uh, take full advantage of that. The Kinsey Company uh, talked about challenges they had with collecting data around enterprises doing agility. And here are some of them. It's from just this year. It's not old data. Uh, the reference is there. Please. Uh, copy that down or look it up uh, on the recorded version of this. All right, so thank you. We know every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or it will be eaten. Every morning a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. It doesn't matter if you're the lion or the gazelle. Get up, get running, get moving. And... Uh, Pierre and I talk about this kind of thing all the time. That is it. And I thank you for uh, listening thus far this morning. Agile encourage the technical support mode paid by mandate and seem to be more to the advantage of developers as they themselves estimate the user story. Yeah. What do you think? And as a result, the business finds IT too expensive. Oh, hey. That's not news, is it? I mean, that, that was the motive behind the propagation of many computers back in the 80s, you know, that I was alluding to earlier. The business has always found IT too expensive. So, um, I'm in agreement, you know, mostly with a lot of that statement. For instance, um, for those of you that remember the Flake Gate, Tom Brady, uh, for those of you, you know, not familiar with U.S. football, I apologize, right? But uh, Tom Brady years ago uh, accused of letting air out of the football and make it easier for his receivers in a Super Bowl game. Uh, big scandal, the flag game. Well, about that same time, I wrote an article to be released with the next NFL season that next following fall called Inflate Gate. How to cheat with agile metrics. You can pull that off my website if you'd like. It's still there. And it talks exactly about that. How agile teams, uh, I listed six ways in which they inflate estimates. Look, inflating estimates is hardly anything new in the IT space. I'm not saying that agile eliminates that. Integrity 
eliminates that. Trust eliminates that. Working with the business and having a partner, being a collaborative, that would help to reduce some of that inclination to inflate because if I don't inflate, then I might be late. And if I'm late, then I'm doomed. Well, we have a lack of trust going on, collaboration, connection with the business, all those things contributing to a sense of a developer needing to inflate to make sure they get it done in time. That's the psychology and that's the philosophy of the IT development space. I, as guilty as anybody of being aware of that and uh, trying to avoid that, right, with the clients that I had when I was doing software development. So I, I hope that is helpful. I agree. There's always how they, they use this silly notion of refactoring after every task. Refactoring's waste. It's rework in the lean world, but not too many of my agile friends want to like acknowledge that or admit to that. So a lot of refactoring going on, add in extra tasks, add hours to tasks. There's lots of ways to cheat. That's not right. And no wonder business doesn't trust IT. So get together, make it work. Do it from a product sense, as opposed to just a project. Sustain your team over the life of a product instead of a, a short duration project. Give your team the chance to know the business better. Give your team a chance to know the technology better. Give the team and the business a chance to build a relationship together. Eh, there, there are some ideas. Hope that helps.